All right, folks, hope everybody's having a great week. We've got a lot of comments to get through this week, so we're just going to dive right in. All right, first up on the suggestions list, we've kind of compiled, or the person that went through these has compiled all the suggestions from several different videos into a, a comprehensive list. M. Jackson says, how about the Who H.U. doing Wolf Totem? Really unusual sound. Okay, I will, I'll check that out. David Walsh says, Cole, I really enjoy your work on this channel. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. I'm anxiously awaiting your discovery. My favorite Bruce album, The Wild Innocent East Street Shuffle. Thank you and keep them coming. David, I actually reacted to that one, the entire record. It's a Patreon exclusive, however, because the songs are just too long and there wasn't really any hits on the album. So I, I couldn't really get it on YouTube. And even if there was one or two tracks I could have gotten on YouTube, the chances of it getting a lot of views were slim to none but it was actually if I'm, I'm hard pressed to say it was my favorite so far i've listened to five bruce studio albums i'm thinking nebraska is probably going to be my favorite right now but followed closely by the wild the innocent and the east street shuffle then again i have i thought about it, i may actually have to pick wild innocent and east street shuffle because it was just a phenomenal phenomenal record Dot Winus says, apparently the judges, this is on home free colder weather, apparently the judges didn't want Rob singing Lee, but our boys stuck to their guns and did a brilliant job. You might have a look at their live version called Colder Memory Lapse. So funny. Okay, I will check it out. And a, a bunch of other commenters also suggested Memory Lapse, and including some of our top commenters, Baby Fry, Carol Burnett, Dot also suggested OCD, spelled O-H-S-E-E-D-E-E. -E -E -E. No, Dot, I'm, I'm sorry, I misread that. Dot Winus suggested Memory Lapse, and OCD is a great username, suggested it a while back on the Adam Rupp drum solo. Jay Heron on the Colder Weather video says you should really listen to their recorded, their recorded version even after listening to it many times. It still gives me chills. Pam Forrester, Pam, one of our top viewers, says, the suggestion, I, the suggestion I have for you for Amy Winehouse are actually duets. Either Body and Soul with Tony Bennett, okay, or Heard It Through the Great Vine with Paul Weller. Both of those are great songs. She may not have been aware of what planet she was on, but she pulled the best out of those two. They compliment each other. As always, thank you for the video and commentary. Keep the music and commentary going. You do it right. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that, and I will, I'll put those on the list for sure. Tammy Dodge on the Peter Holland's Tim Faust video we did last suggested Greensleeve, that, that's on the list. Cheryl Lohr on that same video suggested their version of Blackbird. I think I got that on the list too. Sue Hall says Peter also has an album of Lord of the Rings songs that is wonderful. That sounds right up my alley. Barbara Stewart on the Chris Stapleton Star Spangled Banner says you should check out his cover Whipping Post at a tribute event to Greg Allman at which Allman was in attendance. That sounds amazing. I love Greg Allman. I love that song from the Allman Brothers. Love Chris Stapleton. Sounds right up my alley. There's a YouTube video out there somewhere. Sorry, I don't have the link in hand. That's not a problem. I'll put it on the list and and look it up. Karina Rodebach, another great viewer on the channel. On the voice play, Little Mermaid Medley says, if you want another lovely slide from Jeff, go for if I were a rich man slash girl, not to mention what Ashley Diane accomplished in that Video 2, voice play sure can pick great collaborators. The charismatic voice holds Jeff as her favorite, Ursula. She does a great rendition of Poor Unfortunate Soul herself. I recommend to make reaction to her as well. Okay, I'm not quite used to your new spring look yet. Not complaining, just so different. Yeah, and this is actually how I started out when I, the first couple of months that I did the reaction series. I had my summer my warm weather look going on and then started growing it out about into September and then ended up as the Wolfman, Lon Shane Jr. Wolfman by, by the end of the winter. But yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to. It takes a little bit to get used to, even for me, and I, I do it every year. Andrea Oliver on Voice Play Little Mermaid says, I love this medley. Watched it way too many times. LOL, I really love her appearance in The Wicked. That's going to be Rachel Potter. A Chance to Fly as well. If you haven't already seen it, you need to put it on your list. At will do, 100%. And I'm probably fixing to absolutely butcher this name. It's Sheza Striakis. And if I murdered that, I apologize. Also, on the voice play, Little Mermaid says, I would also recommend voice play's version of We Don't Talk About Bruno. If you haven't heard it yet, I haven't. I've had a lot of folks recommend that one. That's probably going to go on a poll soon. And it'll be on Patreon for patrons to vote. 
Wyla on the voice play Little Mermaid says, I'm going to suggest that you try to get voice play. My mother told me, and really soon I have already reacted to that one, and I think it's dropping on Patreon tomorrow and then YouTube this upcoming Monday. They have a teaser up in their shorts. There's probably a, a sequel to it, Valhalla Calling, and Valhalla Calling, and I believe that's the I've heard from some of their patrons, voice plays patrons, and they, I think they've already released that to their patrons, and it's supposed to be amazing. And that will be on a Patreon poll, probably the next Patreon poll once it's released, if it hasn't already been released. It sounds epic from the short snippet provided. You're probably going to want to have done the other one first because that one premieres. Fair warning, Jeff impersonates the Viking Warhorn, and Ellie seems to have gone berserker. I'm so excited for the upcoming new song. Yeah, absolutely, me too. DTA on the voice play, Little Mermaid says their Moana medley is also great. Yeah, that's actually on our current voice play poll. It's losing right now. I don't think anybody's voted for it, but it's on the poll. And if it doesn't win this week, it'll continue to be on the poll until until it gets picked. Peter. Snedden on Bruce 10th Avenue Freeze Out says, Whilst I know it's mainly the lyrical sense of Bruce's songs you react to, please do something a little different. Something. Uh, there's a little typo here. React to 10th Avenue Freeze Out live video from New York City 2000. It's a barnstormer video. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds great. I love the song, and I've been checking out some of his live stuff. I actually just got through listening to his live in houston 1978 show this first set of that and that's on patreon right now and i really didn't comment on the lyrics at all it was just strictly on the performance and the musicianship which is pretty much what i do whenever i do a, a live cut but yeah that sounds this sounds really good brenda vasilich also on bruce says how about some angelina jordan golden buzzer winner with bohemian rhapsody on america's got talent she was 13 okay i will i'll put her on the list check out Pamela Smith on our Marcelito Pomoy, Marcelito Pomoy video says, Check out his cover of Perfect by Ed Sheeran, sung in English and Italian. It's amazing. Okay, I'll put that on the list. Ron Mahurin on the Pomoy video says, Check out YouTube Marcelito and Massa set. I'm probably butchering that one. Duo, okay? Theodore Panglao says, Hi, please react to Marcelito Pomoy cover of The Power of Love. Thank you. Okay. Macario Oliver on the Marcelito video says, Try listening and reacting to a Filipino singer, Marcelito Pomoy, singing Power of Love and Narito Ako at Wish 107.5. Buzz, his songs, his four songs in America's Got Talent, his version of Endless Love, You Raise Me Up, You're My Heart, You're My Soul. Listen to his Chinese song, The Moon, Represents My Heart, popularized by Teresa Ting. His song's Never Enough. Desposito. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. Perfect. Des Despacito. Should be anyway. Perfect in the prayer at one magical night concert. Ikal Ang. I'm, I'm going to butcher that one. I'm not even going to try. His duet with Morissette. Ammon's secret love song and all his Filipino songs, including those he interpreted at a song of praise, such as Asa Sa Awa Mo, Ama, and Pag by Black. Okay, so we've got a bunch of Marcelito. I'll definitely take a look at some of those and now we're moving on to the jeff castellucci sound of silence video todd green says this is art in its highest form yeah it was phenomenal bj speck another great viewer of the channel says he did such a beautiful rendition on simon and garfunkel's song and poetry i also love that ellie did the lighting and lane did the steady cam this is my favorite version while i have simon and garfunkel on my top shelf because they taught me so much i wish simon and garfunkel had been nominated for nobel laureate in poetry yeah that would have been yeah, that would have been appropriate for sure. I had listened to The Hound and The Fox after voice play came out with Running Up That Hill, Stranger Things. They are superb. I will listen to them. I wasn't as satisfied with Disturbed. I did think it was extremely good. My complaint was that the anger was so one-dimensional. I, I get that, Chris. That's fair criticism. I hate being consumed by anger. Yeah, absolutely. As such, I don't go seeking out the Disturbed version. Yeah, that's a great point. I don't, honestly, I don't listen to it. I don't own the song. I just, I, I've listened to it multiple times and I, 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 I like it, but if I'm going to listen to, of, seek out a version of Sound of Silence to listen to, it probably would not be the Disturbed version. And this is from Alec Sonder Rock Rack. And this is in 
was originally commented in Bosnian, and the person who our person who compiled our list here used Google Translate to translate it. it. It says, it's a real pleasure to see your comments. A man who doesn't talk too much but knows what he's talking about. I appreciate that considerably. Thank you so much, Alexander. On the Peter and Tim sound of silence, Kevin Clements. Kevin, another great viewer of the channel, says, my favorite is still the Chance, Hound, and Fox cover, but this is a close second. Baby Fry, another great viewer of the channel, says, So good. I love their collaborations. They made an album. I have to buy it. I don't know how many layers Peter did in this one. I only know that Peter does 120 tracks in Misty Mountains, right? My favorites are Misty Mountains, Green Sleeves, and so it goes. I've got to do the Green Sleeves soon. But there are many more great Ratchet Cole. Thank you, Baby Fry. Debbie M. says, I did a little digging over on Peter's page and found the arrangers for this are Tom Anderson, Peter Hollins, and Tim Fowles. Very nice. I love all the collaborations with Peter. Springsteen, Blinded by the Light Reaction, Dan the Man. Hey, Dan, I don't think I've heard from you in quite a bit here. Madman drummer is Def Vinny Mad Dog Lopez, the band's first drummer. He told Howard Stern, Three Indians in the Summer is the Cleveland Indians baseball team. Just some facts to brighten your day. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Very nice little tidbit there. Love some trivia. Last week's comments, viewers talked their favorite Sound of Silence versions. Nancy Holter, Nancy, another regular view of the channel, says anything Peter and Tim duet on is well worth watching. While I agree with everyone to hear Disturbed's version again, I don't mind other artists being brought up in a reaction. I have found a number of other artists by following these mentions. It's nice to know that at least some reactors actually notice the comments. Yeah, this is in reference to a comment we had last last week where someone was saying that they really they didn't like the comparison, particularly the Disturbed version of Sound of Silence whenever reactors were reacting to the Jeff Castleach version and I said I understood that but for me that's that's part of the gig you, you compare you compare the previous versions of the songs that you know to the one that you're reviewing on Springsteen Bruce Springsteen Badlands David Walsh says this album came after Born to Run he wanted this to reflect how he saw and felt about life through the people and family from his life the song seemed very dark after Born to Run but they came alive in concert as the most powerful album songs Pete Townsend called this album full of hope yeah and I actually like I said earlier I just got through listening to a set it was on the the darkness on the edge of town tour from 1978 and it was just phenomenal the songs were even better live than they were studio michael walker says his multi-disc release live 1975 to 85 is unthinkably good badlands is on it but so are a number of monster songs that in my humble opinion dwarf it thunder road the river independence day dark on the edge, edge of town backstreet same a few unbelievable genius all around yeah and there's actually some debate over on our patreon right now about should i do the live 75 to 85 in its entirety because it's kind of it'll be retreading some of the ground that i just covered by watching the houston set or should i just kind of pull out songs that i haven't heard live yet but yeah he's he's an incredible live performer on the home free colder weather video bernie regnier regnier maybe says i have really enjoyed this song and home free delivered really touches you emotionally yeah Donna Flynn says the show's producers didn't want Rob to take the lead on this, but the band stood firm and said no way. That's probably why the judges complained about Rob could, have, could very well have been. Leslie O'Neill says every time I rewatch this and hear Jewel saying Austin shot away from those high notes, I have to chuckle because I know what's coming with I want crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think he came out of the box fighting on that one. Yeah, I have I've actually I've I've listened to the I Want Crazy Now and he just he just went for the sky on that one. All right, so we've got a list, a lot of our regular viewers here. We've got Carol Burnett, Lisa Severance, Ruth Minnie, Rebecca Gibbs, Dagmar S., Brennan Sorensen, and Nana Deborah. I'm not sure if I ever heard, I've heard from Nana before. All agree that they also could not hear any pitch issues with Rob. That's what the person who compiled the list just kind of combined these into one comment. Yeah, I said that last time. I didn't really hear any pitch issues there that the judges were talking about. Pam Forrester said this was a total knockout. I think it's the best yet. The vocals are perfect. The complete package was the perfect description. This song was a perfect fit. I totally agree about Zach. He's his own man. Yeah, absolutely. C. Mitchell says, to this point, with the show having allowed only Austin and Tim to be in the forefront, the judges had no other performance with which to compare Rob's voice, his alleged Bobble has been dissected to death. I've yet to see one reactor mention it prior to hearing the judge's observation, then a few while claim they noticed something. 
Austin Stern expression speaks volumes. In my opinion, as to his opinion of the judge's critique, check out Humphrey's official video for the song, Stunning the Behind the Scenes vid is a hoot. Okay, and I'm not sure. I've got I'm, something's, something's a little off here. I'm not sure whether that was Baby Fry or C. Mitchell because I've got both names together and only one comment. So whoever it is, guys, I apologize. And if I, I've missed somebody's, I apologize for that. Vicky, Vicky, and back, back to that comment real quick. Yeah, I, I did. I didn't hear anything. I just did not hear any issue with with Rob's vocals. And and usually, I, I don't know whether my ear is is as attuned as Ben Folds and Jules and Sean's, but I, I I didn't hear it. I just feel like I don't know something something was up with that. And I think somebody mentioning that. Maybe they said that because home free pushback against the producers may have been. I don't know, but I didn't hear anything. Vicky, Vicky Adkins says, this one is a beauty. I love the video of this. Sally Reed says, time for me to eat crow, as the saying goes. I've listened to many of your home free reactions. I see how much you respect home free and their talent. New sub. Okay. And I'm not sure. Sally may have been one of my one of my initial detractors on that first home free video i'm not sure probably probably was at least one of the dislikes we got on that video but sally i appreciate that and yeah home free is great and i just you know, the first video that i saw them on it, it didn't really strike me i appreciate their artistry but it just didn't hit me and then ever since then it's been like oh man this this is if if not the best in the business they are right up there i mean they're just absolutely incredible Rich B313 says, ask any member of Home Free who the best singer is. They all say Rob. Wow. Wow. That is that is incredible. On um, voice play, Little Mermaid, Wildcat 101. Wildcat's another regular view of the channel. Says Rachel was a friend, a friend of Ariel for several years at Disney, so she is very familiar with Ariel. Par 500 Dragon, another regular view of the channel. Says one of my absolute favorites. Jeff as Ursula was genius. Yeah, and hilarious. Jillian Drysdale, another one. This uh, another great viewer of the channel says, "Like you, I think Ellie is so versatile and love the way he sings this. Absolutely, along Endeavor, another regular says this medley is absolutely wonderful. I had not seen the movie before I saw this. Wow, so interesting. I've watched it since. I like this matter. I would love to see you react to their wicked medley. Rachel is also in it. On Jay Nunn's last day, they recorded your best friend and man in the mirror. Farewell for him. He walked out with a carrot cake." with that snail picture on it gotcha very nice good good trivia there and yeah I'm, i hope to eventually get to the wicked medley and all of these are going to be chosen on our patreon polls that's a buck a month and we'll have a voice play poll a week for a buck a month jackie m freeman jackie another great viewer of the channel says awesome reaction voice plays voice plays content manager they make all their own decisions about everything themselves they are completely independent. That's why they don't block. They want everyone to enjoy their videos, even allowing reactors to record their reactions all Patreon after they go to YouTube. A lot of reactors don't pause during the video. They give their reactions after some only once or twice. Right, but here, they're actually, they actually use a third party. It's called SNA. Hold on. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up while I'm right here. Popped over my email because I get emails from them via YouTube or from YouTube about them. Let's see. Yeah. The name of the content manager is S seventy one N A Sounds, and that's who that's who puts a copyright claim on all of the voice play and Jeff stuff. And they are their website is studio seventy one dot com. Now, unless and this may be I don't know maybe maybe the guys run this but the well i went and looked on the website and it looks like that this is a completely independent company it's not actually owned and operated by voice play themselves but they use s71 sounds to manage their content on youtube so the way this works i'm trying not to run along here i think i already already actually already running pretty long but in order to be able to claim anything on YouTube, you have to either be a content manager or use a content manager. Home Free right now is using the Orchard, and we've had all kinds of problems with the Orchard, which we're now finally getting those clear. We appealed, and they've released some, and or they've released one, I think, and then another one they haven't. They didn't release, but they didn't challenge any further, so we've got that one released. Voice Play and Jeff use this S71 in a sounds manager and whenever we upload a reaction video it immediately gets a copyright claim on it which which is fine 
and then we submit, hey, this is fair use, and within about two weeks, we get a email from YouTube back that says, S71 NA Sounds has reviewed your, your fair use claim, and they've released your video, and that's great, but it's not specifically, to my knowledge, based on what I'm seeing on this end, it's not specifically VoicePlay and Jeff that are looking at this stuff. They're actually using a content manager who is then, I'm guessing, with their permission, releasing these reaction videos is, is what I'm seeing on my end. And if I got that wrong, somebody knows something more about that, they, they can correct me on that. MJ Duffy, another regular viewer of the channel, says, Rachel made it as far as the semifinals on the X Factor. It was unfortunate that the sing-off was filmed at the same time. Yeah, it, it was. I really, I, I, Rachel was just so good. Aurora says Lane arranged it, so he made the decisions choices, including talking Jeff into doing Ursula's great. Ikaya says, sounds like YouTube is being a <laughs> pain in the behind these days. I think we should petition them to allow any groups like Voice Play to grant blanket releases so you don't have to deal with it one song at a time. I, that would be amazing. I agree, because right now, I don't, I don't think that's possible. I agree, because... I, I guess it is possible, but they would also have to just release it across the board, meaning if somebody legitimately did infringe on their copyright, <laughs> then they wouldn't have an automatic recourse to deal with that. So, yeah, if, if there was some kind of blanket thing where they could just put up, and if YouTube's algorithm actually was able to identify what was a reaction video and what is a cover or what is somebody trying to get away with using their songs in their in their own content then you could have the content manager select a button on their end that would be like well if it's a reaction song automatically release it something like that would be just incredible for for somebody like us I agree about Rachel singing with him so well, but honestly think the thing that hurt them in the competition was having a lead singer. Yeah, and from my understanding, that was a requisite with the sing-off. They required every group to have at least, you know, like one designated lead singer, and then they let somebody, one other person sing lead at times. That's not how these guys work, right? They're, they're, they're a cohesive group. I actually love it with a core group of four guys and different featured guests rotating in to change things up and keep it fresh. Yeah, honestly, a permanent female lead would be like adding Yoko to the people's sacrilege. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Marsha Young, another regular viewer of the channel, says, Honey Ruin, all chance of voice play doing better. She held them back. The judges didn't make home free use women in their songs. Voice play was set up by the judges to lose from the very beginning. It, it kind of it looks like that, uh, uh, honestly. I, I've watched the entire season at this point. And it did look like there were some groups that they were set up to go farther than others. People have been covering every song out there, and nobody's had a problem with them, so why should voice play be any different? If that was a problem, you would have to take down every video you've ever done. There wouldn't be anyone able to react to anything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agreed. Annette Corrado, another regular view of the channel, also a, a patron. Thanks for your reaction to this one. One of my personal favorites for the memories of all time. I spent with my family members at the theme parks. Of course, Rachel was the right person from Voice Play's huge network of talented friends to be Ariel. She performed as Ariel at Disney World's Little Mermaid attraction. Excellent. However, the challenge here for Rachel, is, if you look close, is that she is very pregnant. So her singing, breath control, and costume are commendable. Yeah, 100%. I just won't mention any names, but I just got through recording a pregnant lady on vocals a couple of months ago and it was yeah it's 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 rough on them absolutely Rachel was also featured in voice plays cover of kidnapped the sandy claws during this time period and is wonderful in that as well yeah i believe i've done that one i believe i've done that one i i, I think that may have been one that i didn't that i did that i had forgotten Jen Shemansky says, Ellie has every vocal tool in his toolbox. He's just a beast. As soon as I saw Jeff was blue, I knew it was going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Bruce Springsteen, 10th Avenue, freeze out reaction. David Walsh says, thanks, Cole. Story of the band coming together. 10th Avenue is a beach town south of Asbury Park. Members lived at 10th Avenue and East Street. Excellent. This song name of the band's East Street moniker is from the pickups to go to gigs at that corner Excellent. I live there in 7981. Great town. There's a Bruce Historic Little Monument there today. Thank you, David. I did not know that. That is some great information there. Gives some context to the song and the band. Love it. Pam Forrester says, and here I am loving Spring Scene yet again. You are right. 
on about him painting a picture. The older I get, the more layers of the mysterious Mr. Springsteen I see. Thank you for showcasing his mean talents. On a side note, the current internet battle raging is if our Pentatonix is or is not the number one currently rated contestants on the Mass Singer show. Wow, the clues, voices, the cough, cough attempt to not sound identical to them. Let's cheer on those California roles. As always, Cole, you do it right, sir. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. Yeah, I have not gotten into Mass Singer. Let me ask you guys something. Should I watch the mass singer and, and do reactions for youtube and patreon if, if, if that's something that you think i should do that you'd like to see let me know calvin great i think he admitted in an interview that he didn't even know what a 10th avenue freeze out is basically it doesn't mean anything yeah uh, that happens it, it's just a good line sometimes and i do this as a songwriter too it just sounds good just the the sound of the line is just so good you got to go with it, even if you don't know what it means. You can you can come up with a meaning later. <laughs> if it just sounds good, you got to do it. Dezinga says, the beard is no more. The beard is no more. I mean, I've got one now, you know, not, nice, nice trim, short beard. And this is what I'll have for basically the next six months or so. But yeah, the big, the big one, gone. Danny Jones. Danny, hadn't heard from you in a while, man. So he's another regular view of the channel. Says, yes, you have pronounced his name correctly. And it's on the Marcelito Pomoy video. Yes, you have pronounced his name correctly, bro. I agree that he's an amazing singer. Plus, he sings in several different languages. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Alona Dever says, I've watched this performance. I don't know how many times. The thing that is amazing is that neither English nor Italian is his native language. He is from the Philippines. I saw a reactor bring in an Italian singer to react with him, specifically to check out his Italian pronunciation. And his Italian pronunciation is as good as his English. Wow. He learned it by rote because he also can't read either language. <laughs> Incredible. Also, this is done live on radio. It's the shtick of that station. Great reaction call. Thank you. You, Alona, and thank you for all that information. Great stuff. Christine Taylor says the Wish Bus is a real bus that was made into a radio station in the Philippines where Marcelito is from. It travels around and artists sing live on it. Marcelito is well known for his solo duets. He used to live on the streets in the Philippines and discovered 18 he could switch voices. He speaks only a little English but listens to songs and just learns them. He can sing in many different languages that he can't speak. He's a very humble guy with amazing voices. Listen to Hallelujah or Endless Love. He's amazing. Wow, that is, that's incredible. Amber Dulay says Marcelito is a Filipino who was orphaned and homeless by the age of seven, mostly raising himself by doing odd jobs. Wow. He would comfort himself by singing and teaching himself to copy when he, what he heard on the radio. He is completely self-taught and is now a married father of two. Well, congratulations to him. Good good deal. He has recently finished, was, was Mike off the cat jumping off the table. He has recently finished a world tour and spends a great deal of time and money giving back to underprivileged kids in the Philippines. His covers of The Power of Love, Time to Say Goodbye, and Despacito are all excellent. I will, I will, I think I've had all three of those recommended at this point, so I'll definitely check those out. Thank you for that information. That's just, this, this guy sounds just amazing. Brenda Grothier says, I never get tired of first time reactions to Marcelito. You didn't disappoint. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah, it was, it was from an objective standpoint. It, if I were watching somebody else react to it and they had the same reaction I did, I would think, man, this is, this is a pretty decent reaction here. Because <laughs> it was just, I was just blown away. I really was. Vittoria Olivero says, just plain raw Filipino talent. Thank you for your reaction. Thank you, Vittoria. Appreciate it. Samuel Jr. Avestra says, Thank you for featuring Marcelito Pomoy, who's a Filipino and is blessed with multiple beautiful voices. Kindly check out other more world-class Filipino artists and talents like the Disney legend and the pride and treasure of the Philippines, Ms. Leah Salona, and her performances as well as other Filipino talents and artists. You will enjoy and love them. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate that. I will check them out. Michael Pennington says, Marcelito is from the Philippines. His father went to jail. His mother banned him at seven to the streets. He worked in bowling alleys to earn food by setting up pens. Wow. He carried bricks, whatever he could do. He never had any singing lessons, no vocal training. God takes care of the orphans. <laughs> wow, that's such a powerful line there at the end, too. Wow, that is just that's an incredible story. Eva Mujal says he's a very good singer here in the Philippines. I love his voice every time. He sings both girl and boy voice so much amazing. Linda Rose Levin, or Levin says, I understand that only three other people in the world can sing like this. Wow. Bob R. says, there are, at the end of the video where he looks like he's coughing, he's having a joke with the producer. The producer joked that he was hiding an extra voice, so Marcelito coughed it up and laughed. Thanks for your reaction. That's great. Great story, Bob. I appreciate that. On our Hound and the Fox Wayfaring Stranger with Adam Chance video, Arlene Atkinsale says, great reaction. Mackenzie has a beautiful voice. Reminds me of the late 
Joey Feek of Joey and Rory. I'm actually not familiar with that singer. I'll have to check him out. On our Bruce Prove It All Night reaction, Steve, Brian says to me, this is one of his best songs. It's from a great album when he was still singing about girls and cars. Born to Run, Darks on the Edge of Town and the River, or his best for me, Born in the USA, is songs mostly from this era, too. Yeah, I just finished Born to Run. That full reaction is on Patreon. And after I finish the second set of his Live in Houston set, I'm going to move on to the river. Really looking forward to it. Really have enjoyed going down this this Bruce Lane here and, and learning more about Bruce Springsteen. On the Adam Rupp drum solo, Paul Martin says, I was going to recommend this clip to you, but I have a habit of checking to see if things have already been recommended or covered before I speak up. Adam Rupp was, I believe, a two-time world champion vocal percussionist. Wow. Can you tell after listening to him that some of those skills remain 100%? Was so happy when I saw you to check this out. As a musician, I knew it would mean more to you from the skills point rather than just wow factor. Yeah, absolutely. Be well, good sir, and thank you again. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that so much. You too. And finally, on our Super Mario Brothers Jimmy Fallon and Super Mario Brothers cast reaction, Ghosty Random says, Yo, Jack Black killed it. Look, I love Jack Black. I like him as an actor, a comedian, and a singer. He's just full blast all the time and whatever he does and it's really really funny and i see the mario brothers movie is actually getting some negative critical reviews the audience score seems to be pretty high right now but still looking forward to checking it out i, I may may check that out in theater with my oldest daughter we'll see but that's going to wrap us up for this week i hope everybody has a great easter thank y'all for watching these videos thank y'all for watching the reaction videos thank you for commenting liking subscribing supporting us on patreon all that good stuff i hope everybody has a great easter y'all be safe and We'll see you soon.